Very good morning dear children this video is for class 10 subject science chapter number 8 and lecture number 6 So children our today's topic is female reproductive system in our previous lecture we have understood that male reproductive system its proper functioning we have seen the structure of it and we have understood functions of each part of it so let us begin with the female reproductive system today so children female reproductive system consists of a pair of ovaries a pair of fallopian tubes uterus and vagina so children here i have the female reproductive system in front of you from humans and it is also from your ncert at page number 137 figure number 8.11 so children then i named some of the parts of it so i will be showing you them here that i was talking you of ovary so these are two ovaries so a pair of ovaries are present in the female reproductive system then we have the oviduct or the fallopian tube here you will see what is the purpose of fallopian tube that ovaries ovaries they produce the eggs or the female sex gamete and it is being transferred to the fallopian tube where the fertilization of villicar and zygote will be formed in the fallopian tube itself here this part is uterus uterus is is the womb where the growth of the embryo or the baby will take place these are the inner lining linings of the uterus here we have a narrow passage from the uterus to the vagina which is the external part of the body and through this orifice this through this vagina only the male reproductive system or the male penis penetrates and it ejects its fluid which is having the sperms in it and those sperms will move on through the cervix it they will go to the fallopian tubes so from this side they will go inside the body of the female so cervix is the narrow passage between the uterus and the vagina now just let me tell you one thing that after the complete growth of the baby which is the time of 9 months what will happen the delivery of the baby or the uh, baby will come out of the body of female reproductive system so with the from this narrow passage only the baby comes out so the cervix and the vagina together they are also called as birth canal so as we have seen the parts in the diagram let us begin with the understanding of each part of it in detail so the first part was ovary we know that there is a pair of ovaries present in the female reproductive system the purpose of ovary is to produce the female sex gametes which is called as egg or ova it also secretes ovary also secretes the female hormones which are estrogen and progesterone here the functions of estrogen and progesterone are the development of uterus fallopian tube and vagina they also cause the appearance of secondary female female sexual characters they regulate the menstrual cycle develop the mammary glands and other changes in after the pregnancy children there are two ovaries in the female reproductive system each lying on either side of the vertebral column and the main purpose is to produce the female sex gamete so here we have the structure of an ovum or the sex cell female sex cell or the egg so here you will see that this egg cell is having a nucleus central nucleus it is having a membrane around it and one polar body is also present here which will later help in the nourishment of the zygote now here 
we have the cytoplasm present as there is the cytoplasm is there in all the cells then we have the radial presence of many of the cells which are called as follicle cells children let me tell you one thing that when a girl child is born at the time of birth itself the ovary is already containing thousands of immature eggs so if there are thousands of immature eggs at the time of birth itself very few of these eggs develop during the active reproductive life of the female so when the reproductive sex organs of the female gets matured then that means very few out of these many eggs get mature on reaching the puberty some of these eggs start maturing that means on the onset of the puberty the these eggs or some of them they start maturing as the egg grows larger or gets mature the follicles also enlarge and gets filled with a fluid at this stage it becomes mature and it is called as graphene follicle so when the egg becomes large enough it is called as graphene follicle normally what happens one egg is released every month by one of its ovaries so either of the two ovaries will release one mature egg each month from the onset of the puberty till the menopause later we will understand what is Uh, this release of one egg and what happens to the egg if it is not fertilized so we'll understand about the menstrual cycle and menopause all in the next lecture because what happens that every month why the uh, matured eggs are released the graphene follicle which is the matured egg gets ruptured at an interval of 28 days if it is not fertilized so this we will understand in the menstrual cycle now let us move to the second part which is the fallopian tubes so children we have seen that fallopian tubes which are also called as ovary duct or uterine tubes they carry the eggs from the ovary to the uterus so because the ovaries they are producing the eggs and they are transferring those eggs into the fallopian tube and the purpose of fallopian tube is to carry these eggs from the ovary to the uterus and here itself in the fallopian tube the fertilization or the fusion of the male sex cell and female sex cell will happen so here the fallopian tubes are also called as fertilization site where the fertilization will occur what happens that ovum released from the ovary enters into the fallopian tube through its opening which is having a finger like projection as we have seen in the diagram as well we have seen that the diagram was having a figure like this on the both of the side we were having some finger like projections connected with the ovary so these finger like projections are helping in transfer of eggs from ovary to fallopian tube the next part is uterus or womb where the growth of the baby takes place so womb is a hollow thick walled muscular organ the developing of the baby takes place here about 9 months before birth and the lower portion here the main function of uterus is to nurture the developing baby for the time period before its birth the lower portion of uterus is a constructed or narrow passage which is called as cervix the uterus opens into vagina through the cervix so uterus uterus is having a small opening cervix 
and it is opening into the vagina the thick muscular wall as we have seen in the diagram of uterus is called as myometrium myo metrium and a nutritious highly vascular inner lining is called as endometrium then the next part is vagina vagina is an elastic tubular canal like structure that connects the uterus with the outside of the body so this is the interface which connects the uterus and the outer part or you can say that this is the interface between the outside of the body and the uterus these sperms enter th the uterus through the vagina until puberty until puberty the vagina is partially or almost completely closed by a thin membrane which is called as hymen so what happens that this muscular thin membrane is there which is present bit over the vagina until puberty and this can be the sign of virginity as well virginity means having no sexual experience so uh, this membrane is present if the person is virgin or having no experience of sexual intercourse before uh, intercourse is a process in which the male sex gametes they are entering inside the body of the female and the process that is called as intercourse or so at the first intercourse timings the membrane which is called as hymen it breaks so as i told you this can be the sign of a virginity but because of the many activities like horse riding and bicycle riding this Uh, can be broken so this membrane usually gets ruptured by physical exercise during the childhood or at the first time of intercourse the opening of vagina is completely separate than that of the urethra so here we will under, we can understand that the urine excretion and the vaginal uh, orifice they are having two different openings vagina is the passage way for menstrual flow we know that there, there is a menstrual cycle which occurs in the females every month because of which the bleeding that happens that is having the vagina as the passage or that menstrual liquid that comes out from the female body through the vagina it is a organ which is also helping or which is forming the birth canal that means the uh, matured baby will come out of the body of the female through the vagina so we have discussed the part of the female uh, reproductive system now the important process is fertilization what is fertilization the fusion of sperm with an egg is called the fertilization process so what happens in this process that sperm from the male body or through the male penis it enters into the vagina then through the vagina it goes into the fallopian tube of the female reproductive system here it gets fused with the egg cell so fusion with egg or ova takes place in the fallopian tube here there's a because of the fusion one zygote is formed then this zygote get 
it keeps on developing and it is called as embryo now further if embryo grows then it is called as fetus and embryo with the help of fallopian tube it is going into the uterus where it will get implanted and further growth of baby will take place in the uterus itself this is the whole process of fertilization what happens when the sperms they enter into the uh, female reproductive system and the egg is getting fertilized here i have a figure to show you that how fertilization happens in the fallopian tube so here you are able to see that sperms they enter through the vagina through the cervix they are going into the uterus and so here you are also able to see the endometrium the inner lining of the uterus which is this so they enter into the vagina goes to the uterus and from here they are going to the fallopian tube so they will reach up to the ovum or the egg which is has been released from the ovary inside the fallopian tube so here what will happen the sperm will fuse with the ovum fusion of sperm and ovum is happening here to form a zygote one thing to be taken care is that fertilization although it can be of different kinds it can be external or it can be internal but in humans internal fertilization takes place where the fusion of the male sex gamete and female sex gamete is taking place inside the body of a female then after fertilization what happens it's the implantation that takes place what do you mean by implantation implantation when the zygote or the fertilized eggs move from the fallopian tube towards the uterus and attach itself onto the wall of the uterus then this process this fixing of fertilized egg on the lining of uterus is called as implantation so here i have given you a flow chart to show you the same process zygote it is attached uh, it is attaching itself to the inner walls of the uterus here the development of the embryo takes place and this makes the pregnancy sure or you can say that if this happens then we can say that that woman is pregnant here one thing happens that before the zygote moves towards the uterus wall to get it attached it starts increasing in size or you can say that multiplication of cell starts happening so then the number of cells increases so now we have a, a sphere or a ball of cells present which is called as embryo so basically it's not the zygote which is getting attached it is the embryo which is getting attached with the inner lining of the uterus so this process of combining or uh, connecting the embryo with the inner uterus wall is called as implantation now here we have some post fertilization changes that happen the embryo gets attached to the mother's uterine wall through the placenta placenta is a duct like structure through which embryo gets attached with the uterine wall another duct cord is there which is called as umbilical cord connects the placenta with the embryo so there is one duct there is one cord embryo is attached to the mother's uterine wall with the placenta placenta is further connected with the umbilical cord now placenta provides the nutrition and respiration from the mother's blood to the developing embryo so nutrition work or respiration is done with the help of placenta and uh, remember umbilical cord is connected to the placenta only and umbilical cord is the cord which need to be separated after the baby takes birth then it needs to be separated cut and tight this is the major connect between the mother and the child because through which the nutritions are provided 
from the mother to the baby and the waste materials are also transferred from the baby towards the blood so the development of embryo inside the uterus till the birth of the baby what is this period called as it is called as gestation period gestation period is of 9 months or it is a proxy approximately 280 days that means this is the time period in which the embryo gets completely developed in a human being or human baby so in this period all the parts of the baby will be completely developed which is called as gestation period the child is born as a result of rhythmic contractions of muscles in the uterus so after the gestation period because of the rhythmic contractions of muscles of uterus the child is born that situation is called in that situation what happens there is a lot of pain inside the female's reproductive system and that is called as labor pain because of that labor pain only the child that uh, when it comes out of the female uterus so what happens in this that because of these con contractions of muscles in the uterus the baby is gradually pushed from the inside of the body to outside the body through the vagina and this process of giving birth to a baby is called as parturition 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 is what giving birth to a baby then there is a uh, term which is called as lactation the word can remind you of milk so as, as we all know that a pair of mammary glands or we call is uh, call it as a breast to nourish the baby after the birth is present on the body of the females so it is a part of female body itself here what happens there is a secretion and storage of milk in the mammary glands and it begins usually within 24 hours hours after delivery or the birth of the baby so this is it for today's lecture dear children in the next lecture we are going to see the menstrual cycle and will understand the population control or pregnancy control so till then take care and goodbye